dear students after studying this module you will be able to understand wildlife and its conservation strategies wildlife protection society of india project tiger wildlife protection act first we will start with the introduction the wildlife laws have a long history and are cumulative result of an increasing awareness of the compelling need to restore the catastrophic ecological imbalances introduced by the depredations inflicted on nature by human being the earlier codified law can be traced to 3rd century bc when ashoka the king of magadha enacted a law in the matter of preservation of wildlife and environment but the first law in india which heralded the era of laws for the wildlife and protection was enacted in the year 1887 by the british and was titled as the wild birds protection act 1887 this act enabled the then government to frame rules prohibiting the possession or sale of any kinds of specified wild birds which have been killed or taken during the breeding season again the british government in the year 1912 passed the wild birds and animals protection act 1912 as the act of 1887 proved to be inadequate for the protection of wild birds and animals the act of 1912 was amended in the year 1935 by the wild birds and animals protection amendment act of 1935 after the second world war the freedom struggle for india started which relegated this to the background but after independence the constituent assembly in the draft constitution placed protection of wild birds and wild animals at the entry number 20 in the state list and the state legislature has been given power to legislate it was as late as which resulted in the enactment of a comprehensive law in 1972 1960s that the concern for the depleting wild finally aroused which resulted in the enactment of a comprehensive law in 1972 What is wildlife? Wildlife traditionally refers to non-domesticated animal species but has come to include all plants, fungi and other organisms which grow or live wild in an area without being introduced by humans. Domesticating wild plant and animal species for human benefit has occurred many times all over the planet and has a major impact on the environment. both positive and negative wildlife can be found in all ecosystems deserts forests rainforests plains grasslands and other areas including the most developed urban sites all have distinct forms of wildlife while the term in popular culture usually refers to animals that are untouched by human factors most scientists agree that wildlife around is affected by human activities humans are destructive to the wildlife environment wildlife protection act 1972 the first comprehensive legislation relating to protection of wildlife was passed by the indian parliament and assented by the president on 9 september 1972 and came to be known as the wildlife protection act 1972 53 or 1972 the act provides for the protection of wild animals birds and plants and for matters connected therewith or ancillary incidental thereto it extends to the whole of india except the state of jammu and kashmir which has its own wildlife act it has six schedules which give varying degrees of protection schedule 1 and part 2 of schedule 2 provide absolute protection offenses under these are prescribed the highest penalties species listed in schedule 3 and schedule 4 are also protected but the penalties are much lower schedule 5 includes the animals which may be hunted 
the plants in schedule 6 are prohibited from cultivation and planting the hunting to the enforcement authorities have the power to compound offenses under this schedule that is they impose fines on the offenders it shall be the duty of every citizen of India to protect and improve the natural environment including forests lakes rivers and wildlife and to have compassion for living creatures the penalties penalties are prescribed in section 51 of the act enforcement can be performed by agencies such as the forest department the police the wildlife crime control bureau the customs and the central bureau of investigation charge sheets can be filed directly by the forest department other enforcement agencies often due to the lack of technical expertise hand over cases to the forest department now the list of amendments in wildlife protection act 1972 to remove deficiencies to include much more such animals and to empower authorities for its enforcement the act was amended four times this is as follows the wildlife protection amendment act of 1982 23 of 1982 the wildlife protection amendment act 1986 28 of 1986 the wildlife protection amendment act 1995 44 of 1991 the wildlife protection amendment act 1993 26 of 1993now wildlife protection society of india the wildlife protection society of india wpsi was founded in 1994 by belinda wright since its dawn wpsi's main aim has been to bring a new focus to manage india's growing wildlife crisis it provides support and information to government authorities to combat poaching and the escalating illegal wildlife trade particularly in wild tigers it has now broadened its focus to deal with human animal conflicts and provide support for research projects with a team of committed environmentalists WPSI is one of the most respected and effective wildlife conservation organizations in India it is a registered non-profit organization funded by a wide range of Indian and international donors the society's board members include leading conservationists and business people. They collaborate with state governments to monitor the illegal wildlife trade and provide them with hands-on training and support to combat poaching and the illegal wildlife trade. They conduct wildlife law enforcement workshops for enforcement agencies. More than 8,000 forest police and custom officers have received training in more than 200 workshops which have been held in 17 states across India they made presentations to the National Police Academy the Indian Institute of Criminology the Central Bureau of Investigation the Indo-Tibetan Border Police Customs and Exercise the Wildlife Institute of India Tiger Reserve Authorities and Enforcement Training Centers on Prevention and Protection programs WPSI has developed a wildlife crime database which is one of the most comprehensive in India with details of over 20,000 wildlife cases and 16,000 alleged wildlife criminals it is constantly analyzed and updated with inputs from a number of sources including our country network of investigators the information plays a critical role in the development of new strategies to protect Indian wildlife. WPSI have pioneered investigations into the trade in tiger parts and other endangered species valued in the illegal wildlife trade and exposed widespread tiger poaching and its links to the use of tiger parts in traditional Chinese medicine. The death of a wild tiger no longer is ignored and people know now how and why tigers are killed they were the first organization to expose the working of the shatush trade and its links with the trade in tiger parts over the years they have assisted in the arrest of hundreds of wildlife criminals 
and the seizures of huge amounts of illegal wildlife products, particularly tiger parks. In 2012, they provided information and assistance to enforcement agencies to register 39 wildlife cases in which a total of 97 alleged wildlife criminals were arrested. The legal program supports the prosecution of a number of important wildlife cases. These include poaching and trade cases that involve tiger and other endangered species. They also file petitions on important wildlife conservation issues including encroachments in protected areas. On the policy front, WPSI provides inputs to the central and state governments for the development of better policies governing forests and wildlife. The WPSI works under the following four heads to bring about a balanced approach towards the protection and conservation of wildlife. First is investigation. WPSI maintains a network of undercover agents and informants who gather intelligence on the illegal trade in endangered species. Then next is training. WPSI conducts wildlife law enforcement workshops for enforcement agencies. Since 2000, it has undertaken over 25 workshops in 12 states across India. Next is conservation. WPSI supports conservation projects for species as varied as the tiger, otter and sea turtle. Among these projects are support to Bandipur Tiger Reserve, trade and wildlife crimes grassroots, NGO support network, support to Corbett Tiger Reserve and adjoining forests and support to Sundarbans Tiger Reserve. They also provide support to prosecution of wildlife court cases and public interest litigation. They also provide education. WPSI is actively involved in all of India's major wildlife conservation issues and has been in the forefront of media campaigns to highlight the importance of wildlife protection. WPSI prints and distributes posters creating awareness among people about tiger and wildlife conservation and laws. The posters target the general population, highlight the need for conservation and encouraging the protection of wildlife and spelling out penalties for poaching and trading. Now we will discuss about Project Tiger. Project Tiger is a tiger conservation program launched in 1973 by the government of India under its the then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. The project aims at ensuring a viable population of Bengal tigers in their natural habitats and also to protect them from extinction and preserving area of biological importance as a natural heritage forever represented as close as possible the diversity of ecosystems across the tigers distribution in the country. The project's task force visualized these tiger reserves as breeding nuclei from which surplus animals would migrate to adjacent forests. Funds and commitment were mastered to support the intensive program of habitat protection and rehabilitation under the project. The government has set up a tiger protection force to combat poachers and funded the relocation of villages to minimize human tiger conflicts. Now the main highlights of the project are Project Tiger is a wildlife conservation movement initiated in India in 1973. The project aims at tiger conservation in specially constituted tiger reserves throughout India. Creation of wildlife sanctuaries and reserves with mandatory fencing. Special task force be prepared for preservation of this supreme predator. Department be provided with additional personal and wireless equipment with an immediate effect. Rehabilitation of locals done outside the reserve forest with immediate effect. Immediate compensation to villages in case of kill made by a tiger. Immediate seize of weapon license from villages given before 1973 unless prescribed officially. Now the current status. 
During the Tiger census of 2006, a new methodology was used extrapolating site specific densities of tigers. Their co predators and prey derived from camera track and sign surveys using GIS. Based on the result of these surveys, the total tiger population have been estimated as 1,411 individuals ranging from 1,165 to 1,657 adult and sub-adult tigers of more than 1 point years of age. Owing to the project, the number of tigers has improved to 2,226 as per the latest census report released on January 20, 2015. Next is wildlife conservation. In the world, 1,072 animal species are considered endangered or threatened. 748 plant species are listed as well. Wildlife Protection Act started in 1972. Wildlife conservation is the protection of species and habitats of animals banning the hunting of endangered or threatened species has been decided. Wildlife conservation is the practice of protecting wild plant and animals and their habitats. Wildlife conservation has become an increasingly important practice due to the negative effects of human activity on wildlife. The science of extinction is called derology. An endangered species is defined as a population of a living being that is at the danger of becoming extinct because of several reasons. A species may tend to be endangered if it has a very low population or is threatened by the varying environmental or prepositional parameters. Mainly endangered animals in India are snow leopard, Bengal tiger, Asiatic lion, purple frog or pig nose frog, great Indian vulture, Indian giant squirrel, giant Indian fruit bat, great birds, king cobra, Asiatic cheetah, pink headed duck and Indian orange. Feared natural wildlife habitat areas remain each year. Moreover, the habitat that remains has often been degraded to bear little resemblance to the wild areas which existed in the past. Habitat loss due to destruction, fragmentation or degradation of habitat is the primary threat to the survival of wildlife in the United States. When an ecosystem has been dramatically changed by human activities such as agriculture, oil and gas exploration, commercial development or water diversion, it may no longer be able to provide the food, water, cover and places to raise young. Every day there are fewer places left that wildlife can call home. There are three major kinds of habitat loss. Habitat destruction. A bulldozer pushing down trees is the iconic image of habitat destruction. Other ways that people are directly destroying habitat include filling in wetlands, dirging rivers, mowing fields and cutting down trees. Next is habitat fragmentation. Much of the remaining terrestrial wildlife habitat in the US has been cut up into fragments by roads and development. Aquatic species habitat has been fragmented by dams and water diversions. These fragments of habitat may not be very large or connected enough to support species that need a large territory in which to find mates and food. The loss and fragmentation of habitat make it difficult for migratory species to find places to rest and feed along their migration routes. Next is habitat degradation. Pollution, invasive species and disruption of ecosystem processes such as changing the intensity of fires in an ecosystem are some of the ways habitats can become so degraded that they no longer support native wildlife. Then next is climate change. Global warming is making hot 
days hotter, rainfall and flooding heavier, hurricanes stronger and droughts more severe. This intensification of weather and climate extremes will be the most visible impact of global warming in our everyday lives. It is also causing dangerous changes to the landscape of our world, adding stress to wildlife species and their habitat. Since many types of plants and animals have specific habitat requirements, climate change could cause disastrous loss of wildlife species. A slight drop or rise in average rainfall will translate into large seasonal changes. Hibernating mammals, reptiles, amphibians and insects are harmed and disturbed. Plants and wildlife are sensitive to moisture change, so they will be harmed by any change in moisture level. Natural phenomena like floods, earthquakes, volcanoes, lightning or forest fires. Unregulated hunting and poaching. Unregulated hunting and poaching causes a major threat to wildlife. Along with this mismanagement of forest department and forest guards triggers this problem. Pollution. Pollutants released into the environment are ingested by a wide variety of organisms. Pesticides and toxic chemicals being widely used, making the environment toxic to, to certain plants, insects and rodents. Perhaps the largest threat is the extreme growing indifference of the public to wildlife, conservation and environmental issues in general. Overexploitation of resources, that is exploitation of wild populations for food has resulted in population crashes like overfishing and overgrazing for example. Overexploitation is the overuse of the wildlife and plant species by people for food, clothing, pets, medicine, sport and many other purposes. People have always depended on wildlife and plants for food, clothing, medicine, shelter and many other needs. But today we are taking more than the natural world can supply. The danger is that if we take too many individuals of a species from the natural environment, the species may no longer be able to survive. The loss of one species can affect many other species in an ecosystem. The hunting, trapping, collecting and fishing of wildlife at unsustainable levels is not something new. The passenger pigeon was hunted to extinction early in the last century and overhunting nearly caused the extinction of the American bison and several species of whales. Increased understanding about the world's current wildlife situation and an increased emphasis on education will give future generations an opportunity to experience nature to its fullest extent. Now we'll deal with a case study, black buck hunting case of 2001. The black buck antelope cervicapra is an undulate species of antelope native of the Indian subcontinent that has been classified as near threatened by IUCN since 2003 as its range has decreased sharply during the 20th century. The native population is stable with an estimated 50,000 individuals as on 2001. On 17th February 2006, Salman Khan was sentenced to one year in prison for hunting the chinkara, an endangered species. The sentence was stayed by a higher court during appeal. On 10th April 2006, he was handed a five-year jail term and remanded to Jodhpur jail until 13th April. He was granted bail on 24th July 2012. Rajasthan High Court finalized charges against Salman Khan and his colleagues in the endangered black buck killing case, paving way for the start of the trial. On July 9, 2014, Supreme Court issued a notice to Salman Khan on Rajasthan government's plea challenging the High Court order suspending his conviction. Now we will end this module with the summary. After reading this module, you will be able to understand what is wildlife 
and why is its conservation important? The different organizations that are working together towards the wildlife conservation in India. The Wildlife Protection Act of India 1972, Project Tiger 1973 and its improving status.